I was so inspired and intrigued uh, and curious to 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 hear the video, the the conversation that you, Gil and Laurie had um, about the chromatic scale in the E major partita, the the scale that goes, you know, and and how there's kind of this line, and you know, I love this idea of thinking that. Bach had a secret language that he embedded into his music. And so Bach was always, always thinking, rethinking, trying to find new meanings, hidden meanings in his music. So curious to know what you think about that. I love it. I love it. I think it's right. I think you're onto something. (laughs) Definitely. All right, everybody. It's a treasure hunt. Go back to your Bach. Find (laughs) the hidden stuff. We'll make more videos. (laughs) You know what I would say maybe so might be interesting is I do believe he signs his name mm. B-A-C-H uh-huh. in the solo sonatas and partitas. Uh-huh. And the H for the non... Right, so B is B flat. And then the A is B. And then the H... And that, that might be interesting um, if, if we're talking about treasure hunts. Do I don't you know. Like he signs it in everything he does? You know, my friend Tony Newman, I was playing the Brandenburgs with him, and he said, Gil, every Brandenburg concerto, you find B-A-C-H. It's signed on every one of them. <laughs> and, and anyway, I do, I do believe it does happen in the solo violin. Mm-hmm. Like signing the painting. Well. Totally. Yeah. 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 Wow. Very cool. But, the, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I, I don't I don't want to fall into con- conjecture too much, but, you know, there, I do remember reading, and I, I should, I should have looked up before we started talking. Um, there was a brilliant professor online who analyzed all the um, WTC, all the well-tempered clavier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fugues, and uh, he, in particular, I remember the C-sharp minor fugue, and his his analysis of it was very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, his idea was that it's a five part fugue, and five being, you know, a metaphor for the for the five wounds of Christ. Oh. And then the the sort of running eighth notes being the brook, you know, the the Bach mm-hmm. Bach means brook, and oh. and Bach does sign his name. Yeah, he broke, yeah. But, but but the way he signs his name is is not like. A, it's the opposite of a vanity way of saying yeah. it. It's yeah. more like th- the theme actually is is like a cross, you know, da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. and um, and the way Bach finds the name is is like gladly the cross I'll bear kind of. Mm-hmm. So that's not my my analysis. This this is on the internet, and I'm sorry I can't remember the name of the professor who yeah. put it up. But there's there are a lot of. Um, fascinating dimensions and spiritual dimensions to, mm-hmm. to this music. You know, I've been thinking a lot, um, the, 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 the beautiful, wonderful scholar violinist Andrew Manzi gives a, a really yeah. wonderful masterclass at USC where he talks about the title page of the sonatas and partitas, uh, which Bach doesn't call partitas, but he calls them partias, which apparently means something different than just the set of dances, but that the idea that he writes say solo yeah actually has a special meaning that he obviously knew enough italian to know that solos would be soli but yeah, that yeah. say solo means something different it means i'm alone be, it means to be alone yeah yeah and so you know in a sense i've been playing these pieces and and over the last i think now 168 days i've been been playing through a minute of the bach every day and and the sonatas and partitas and i've been thinking about what it means to be Alone. What is the difference between solitude and isolation? You wrote a blog and, uh, about it, didn't you? I did. Yeah. And and what I thought about was how isolation might draw us into a space that is uh, smaller. Uh, isolation might draw us into disconnection, but solitude feels different. Solitude feels generative. That it's an opening to connection. That perhaps we're quest- we're opening to a question but we're opening in a way that isolation doesn't. And so I've been thinking about this back and forth with regards to uh, the sonatas and partitas and what it means to play them privately. 
And also in 1720, when uh, Maria Barbara very suddenly died and he came home, what does it mean to play those pieces through all of all the facets of grief? Um, and and kind of think about that as well. So it's been it's been remarkable to think that these pieces become a companion to us, a spiritual companion to us for our whole lives. Yeah. The, the one thing I'll toss into the mix there mm. is that um, you know Bach was orphaned at a very young yeah. age. He lost right. both his mother and his father right. before he was nine years old. And there is I I don't know if this is um, if if this is exactly correct but but one of the ideas is that his father taught him to play the violin mm. before, before he died and so to think of what it means to be alone what that means for an orphan yeah. you know that maybe that I, I yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Add that to the mix too it mm. goes beyond yeah mm -hmm. being a being a widower yeah as well as being an orphan i mean mm -hmm. both and I think what stays with us is the perseverance and, and the resilience. And perhaps that is what informs Bach's spirituality in a sense, that it's not about celebrating himself, but it's about celebrating the way. And I think that in, in that sense, there is a kind of metaphor for us to think about what it means to practice, that practicing is something that stays with us forever. You know, it stays with us as kind of the way, the process being more important than the product of what we make at any given time. So clearly a conversation for all of us musicians and citizens to continue having.